In the previous video, we learned about sliding window, a problem-solving technique that works by maintaining a window that represents a contiguous part of the data. In this video, we will use it to solve a popular coding problem, longest substring without repeating characters. The title says it all. We have a string s and we want to find the length of the longest substring with no repeating characters. For example, here the output should be 6 because the longest one is EAFCBH. To solve this problem, we can think of just traversing all the existing substrings while keeping track of the greatest length, thus the brute force solution. We traverse all indexes as the end of the substring, for each one of them we traverse all indexes before it as the beginning of the substring, and for each couple start end, we extract the substring from start to end, and if it has no repeating characters, we check if its length replaces the maximum length we found so far. And to check if a string has no repeating characters, we just convert it to a set and compare the lengths. Converting to a set removes duplicates, so if the length is still equal to the length of the original string, then we have no duplicates, hence no repeating characters. After traversing all the substrings, we just return max length, the result we're searching for. This solution is quite easy to implement, but it's very slow. We have nested loops plus the cost of extracting and analyzing the substring at each iteration. It gives us a time complexity of O of n cubed, where n is the length of the string. How can we improve this solution? Let's suppose that we have this string and we're at this stage of the process. The end index is 9. In this situation, we want to find the longest substring that ends at index 9. So we start traversing start indexes. With index 0, we have no repeating characters from 0 to 9. We get a substring without repeating characters of length 10. Then index 1, no repeating characters. Then index 2, same thing, and so on. We want the longest one. It's when we start at index 0. So here we deduce that when we have no repeating characters, we just put start at 0 to maximize the length. Now we move n to index 10. Here things are different, because the character at index 10 is repeated before. Let's start traversing start indexes. Index 0, the substring from 0 to 10 has repeating characters. Index 1, same thing. 2, same thing. 3, also has repeating characters. 4, same thing. Then 5, here we have no repeating characters, we found a valid substring of length 6. Then index 6, no repeating, we found a valid substring of length 5. Then 7, we found with a length of 4, and so on. Among all these substrings, which one is the longest valid one that ends at index 10? It's this one. And you can notice that it's the one that starts just after the repeated character. We deduce that if s of n is repeated, to get the longest valid substring, we start just after the repeated character. Ok, now we know that to get the longest valid substring that ends at index n, if there is no repeating characters, we just start at 0, else if s of n is repeated before, we start just after the repeated character. Now you may tell me, what if we had multiple repeated characters? Well, we can make sure to not have more than one repeated character. The idea is that every time we find a new repeated character, we eliminate it. Let me show you how. At index 10, we find the second instance of the letter C. It means that in remaining iterations, all substrings that will include both instances of C won't be considered as valid. It's useless to traverse them. This is why, from now on, we will directly start just after C. We drop all previous characters, because starting in one of them gives an invalid substring. Let's combine these two ideas. The first idea says that the longest valid substring that ends at a given index end is the one that starts as soon as we have no repeating characters. And the second one says that to remove a repeated character, we put the initial start index just after it. We drop all previous characters. Let's apply them on this example. Our first substring is the one that starts and ends at index 0. It has no repeating characters. So we found a substring without repeating characters of length 1. It's better than nothing. We increment n to move to the next iteration. 
we still have no repeating characters, and our actual substring has a length of 2, better than 1. It becomes our new longest valid substring. Next iteration, n is at index 2. We still have no repeating characters, so we found the valid one of length 3. It replaces. You can see that here we're not moving start because doing so would just shorten our substring, while we want it as long as possible. Next iteration, A, B, C, E, still no repeating characters. We have a valid substring of length 4, it replaces 3. Now when we move to the next iteration, we notice that B is repeated. Its first instance in our substring is at index 1. What to do in this case? We said that to remove a repeated character, we put start index just after it. We put start at index 2. We did that because now that we found a repeated character, starting from the actual iteration, all substrings that start from index 0 or 1 will be invalid, because they would have two instances of B. So we decided to darkly start at index 2. By putting start at 2, our substring between start and end now has no repeating characters. It became valid again. We deduce that the longest valid substring that ends at index 4 is the one that starts at index 2, CEB. We don't need to check other ones because if we move star to the left, we'd introduce the repeated character again, and if we move star to the right, we'd get a shorter substring. CEB has a length of 3, it's not better than 4. Next iteration. It's true that A exists before in the string, but we don't care because it's before where our substring starts. Our substring has no repeating characters. Substring of length 4, it doesn't replace. Next iteration, we've seen E before in our substring, at index 3, so we put start just after it, at index 4, to avoid having duplicates in our substring. Length 3, it doesn't replace. By the way, the technique we're using here is sliding window because we're maintaining a window that represents a substring without repeating characters. Remember that in the last video, we said that the window must respect constraints. In this problem, the constraint is to have no repeating characters. This is why, when adding a new character to our window, we were instantly checking if we didn't see it before. And if it was the case, we were shrinking the window enough to get rid of that character, to keep respecting the constraint. Ok, let's continue. Next iteration, A is repeated before in our substring, at index 5, so we put start at index 6. Substring of length 2, it doesn't replace. Next iteration, no repeating characters, length 3, it doesn't replace. Next iteration, no repeating characters, length 4, it doesn't replace. Next iteration, no repeating characters, length 5, it replaces. Next iteration, no repeating characters, length 6, it replaces. Next iteration, f is seen before at index 8, so we put start at index 9. Length 4, it doesn't replace. Next iteration, no repeating characters, length 5, it doesn't replace. Last iteration, b is already in our substring at index 10, so we put start at index 11. Length 4, it doesn't replace. We finished traversing all the string s, we found out that the length of the longest valid substring is 6, it's E, A, F, C, B, H. What we were doing here is that at each iteration, we were finding the longest valid substring that ends at that index, the longest local valid substring. And by keeping track of the longest one among them, we've been able to find the longest global valid substring, the one we were searching for. All that while using sliding window technique, to reduce the number of substrings we traverse. Let's try to write the pseudocode of this process. MaxLand starts at 0 because we didn't traverse any substring yet. Start also started at 0. Now we traverse all indexes, each one of them represents where our substring is ending. At each iteration, we started by immediately checking if the new character, as of end, have been seen before in our substring the one between start and end. So we search for the last index where we've seen it, and to know if it's in our substring, we check if it's between start inclusive and end exclusive. If it was the case, we were putting start just after the position of where we've seen it. 
After it, whether the character is repeated or not, we will check in if the actual substring replaces the longest one we found so far. The actual substring is the one between start and end inclusive. Its length is n minus start plus 1. So max length becomes max between its actual value and n minus start plus 1. After the loop, the length of the longest global value substring is in max length. We return it. The ambiguous part in this pseudocode is this one. S and last pause is the last index where we've seen S of end. To implement this pseudocode, we can think of the brute force way, which traverses the part between start and end to search for S of end. Here we're using find method. It returns minus one if it doesn't find the searched character. But traversing a lot of characters at each iteration would result in an O of n squared time complexity. Better than the first solution, but still slow. We have a better way to implement it, to avoid always traversing the whole substring again to search for S of end. The idea is to keep track of the last index where we've seen each character in hash table. A hash table where the key is a character and the value is the index where it was last seen. Minus 1 by default. Minus 1 means we didn't see it yet. And at the end of each iteration, we update. We set end as the last index where we've seen S of end. And to get the last position where we've seen S of end, we just read its value in the hash table. In code, we create last scene which is a hash table where minus 1 is the default value, then at each iteration, S end last pause is just last scene of S of end. And at the end of the iteration, we assign end to last scene of S of end. Because end became the most recent position where we've seen S of end. And because searching and updating in a hash table costs O of 1 in average, we get an O of n time complexity, better than solutions we've seen before. And this is how we solve the longest substring without repeating characters problem, by using sliding window and hash table techniques. We've reached the end of this video, if you want to support the channel, like and subscribe, or you can buy one of my algorithms and data structures related courses. Links are in the description. See you in the next video.